Hello everyone. So finally today we're going to talk about the VPC demo. I'm going to show you how to create a VPC and how to create the VPC components, whatever we have discussed so far in our previous videos. So stay tuned and let's get started. So before we jump into our VPC demo, uh, I just wanted to discuss few core concepts like I want you to understand the core fundamental difference between the default VPC and a non-default VPC. Now what is the default and non-default VPC? So whenever you log in into your AWS console, uh, AWS will provide you with the default VPC option. Uh, no matter whichever region you go, whether it's Mumbai or North Virginia or Ohio region, every region will come up with the default VPC. Now you can either use that VPC or you can create your own uh, private VPC and you can start creating instance in your own custom VPC. But irrespective of that, AWS provides everyone a default VPC option when they create an account in your VPC in every region, right? So VPC is region specific. So let us first discuss like what are all the basic differences between uh, the VPC which has been provided by AWS and the VPC which you would be creating, which we will be referring at as a non-default VPC. So let's get started. So. The first and foremost difference is the default VPC is a managed VPC. It is an AWS managed VPC. So the default VPC is an AWS managed VPC. You, so you do not have to create any of the subnets or the route tables or the internet gateway. You don't have to think about all those configurations. AWS does it for you. So the moment you log in into your AWS VPC, you get your VPC, you get your route tables, you have your internet uh, gateways, and all the components uh, which the VPC will be used is already available to you on the platter. Whereas when you come to your non-default VPC, which you will be creating, you have to create all the stuff by yourself. So we would write managed by the customer. So this is one difference. Another difference is uh, when you log in into your default VPC, so we have spoken in lengths and breadths about the concepts of subnets and we have spoken about private subnet and public subnet. In default VPC, by default, AWS provides you public subnet, right? And before you understand, let me tell you there is nothing like a public or a private subnet when it compares to AWS. You make a subnet private or a public depending on the access you provide. So the second important point would be in default, you don't have a private subnet. Whereas when you create your own VPC, you can make your subnets into a public or a private based on your requirement. So you need to self-manage your own subnet. You have to take a call whether to make your subnet as a public or to restrict the access and to make it a private, it's up to you. Now, the third difference and the most important difference is in the default VPC, you have public IP addresses. Whereas in non-default VPC, there is no concept of public IP addresses. You only have private IP address and you have elastic IP address. So when you create your EC2 instance in a custom VPC, you will not have a public IP address in contrary to what you create in your default VPC. So you create your EC2, it comes with a private IP address, and then you have to create your elastic IP and associate that with your EC2 instance. So you do not have the concept of public IP. So these are the three uh, major differences that you have to keep in mind when you uh, decide to create a VPC. So in your organization, 
you need to take a call whether you have to create a VPC or you don't have to create a VPC and you can pretty well manage with the default VPC itself. So this is the big picture before we jump into the demo. So for you, it's for you to make it easy to understand. I will start a new video with my de with my demo on how to create a VPC, and I'll end my video with this. So in the very next video, we will start with our demo. I hope you uh, understood the main difference between default and non-default VPC because this is very important before you start creating a VPC. Because sometimes what happens, we uh, create a self non default vpc and then we realize that you know uh, we don't get a public ip address right and we have to create an elastic ip address and associate them um, with our ec2 instances so it is very important to know what are the advantages and disadvantages that you get when you make a call to create your own vpc so this is the end of the video so in the next video we will start with our demo session